Hey there, this is Perch. So wh what do you do when you get a an actor or a creator or somebody that gets to be bigger than the property, that gets to be um, infamous or, or you know, I, a, a good example, if we want to look historically, you can look at Todd McFarlane, who was the golden child of, of Marvel. I mean, you put him on Spider-Man, he sold just insane amount of titles. Um, he, I mean, and, and not just the comics, I mean, shirts, posters, merchandise, stuff you could license. They're still doing it today. I mean, there's still Todd McFarlane, Spider-Man material that is pumped out, uh, here now, 25 years later. It's, it's amazing. And this was a guy who was a rock star. And at some point rock stars become uncontrollable. And definitely when he left for image did spawn. Um, you, you definitely, if you lived through that time, you saw the different levels of bitterness that Marvel went through, um, where, where Tom McFarlane was concerned. I mean, there was definitely a, I think a feeling of betrayal at some points there was, you know, people who admired, there was a sense of fear that every other artist was going to get popular, was going to go the same route. So we better not hype them up, uh, as much as, as they did with Todd. There's, there is definitely a, a, a lot of emotions. There's a seven stages of, of grief uh, that, that Marvel went through uh, when the image folks left. Um, and, and definitely Jim Lee, Hurt, Silvestri, all these guys. But uh, Todd was the one that just, uh, I mean, there, there was a, a long period of bitterness <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and concern. I mean, it's just a lot of, a lot of phases in that relationship. I mean, that's, that's a whole era of videos all to themselves. But what about, you know, what about today's times? I mean, what about you get, you know, what, what happens when you get a creator? So a good example, Dan Slott. So Dan Slott, a writer of Spider-Man, uh, up and coming writer, uh, had definitely, a, you know, established a name for himself, uh, you know, a big, a big name for himself. He had established a name for himself on a number of titles for a long time, but then we got to Spider-Man. It all seems to sit around Spider-Man. There's something about that character. It just irks people. Um, it uh, Slot got to be a bigger uh, hero on that title, uh, got to be kind of synonymous with the title. Certainly did a lot of other things, Silver Surfer, everything else. Um, and then, and at much different scale of, of Todd, but still uh, Dan got to doing some shenanigans online. And a lot of people are like, oh, you mean the, the social war blocking stuff? No, actually, I'm talking about before that with uh, some of the, the message board shenanigans where he, he had sock puppets that he was running um, of himself to kind of you know have arguments and, and do other things. And it's embarrassing. I, it's not it's not you know not a lot of people know. I mean, the, the amount of people, comic fans, people buying comics are actually going to message boards, going to social media and engaging there is is relatively small. That's the one thing that is kind of the good news, bad news of, of uh, comics Twitter is you see a lot of, of stuff there, a lot of angst, but at the end of the day, it's still a very small percentage of actual comic audiences. Um, and that's, you know, that that's either good news or bad news, depending on you, who you are. But, um, but Dan Slott got uh, not a bad rep, well, sort of a bad reputation. It was definitely a, maybe this guy is needs a little bit more handholding. Maybe, you know, we, if, we got to be careful about bringing this guy in too close because he's showing some, uh, some instability. He's showing some, uh, that, that, you know, he's, he's up to some, up to some no good behavior online. And, uh, we spoke, but at the other hand, he sells books and not a lot of people know about that behavior online. So, you know, what do we do? You know, do you, do you have his editor kind of call him up? Do you rein him in? Do you punish him on titles? Well, the problem is when you punish people on a title, if you have a writer or an artist who gets into some shenanigans, um, very loose word to describe what's a lot of kind of crazy behavior. I'm still always amazed, by the way, when, when grown adults and I'm talking, you know, if you're you're old enough to hold a gun and go shoot people um, in, in wars, then, you know, you, you, you're grown, you're grown adult. There's more growing that can be done. Absolutely. But, you know, I, you're my tolerance for shenanigans drops a little bit at that point. It's you, you, you gotta start to produce some value, um, to the world, but that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, 
what do you do if you punish them, if you take them off a title and they're a, a, a strong selling kind of rock star level creator, then you're really punishing yourself. Um, yes, it's true that that person is, uh, you know, may make less money or, you know, over time you're eroding their fame and popularity. If you keep them off books, that's all very true. But if a name sells a book and you are the publisher and somebody gets up to some, some hijinks, <laughs> we'll use a different word there that you have nothing to do with. You're just sitting there, you know, trying to manage your portfolio, get some books out. Your job is to bring in artists, creators, uh, writers, everything else that are going to move titles. And then one of those creators um, does something stupid. It's it's tough because if that person's making you money, you're basically saying, all right, well, I'm going to stop making money and go on a search for another creator. And, you know, hopefully next time I'll you know have a tighter rein on these guys. But when the creators are freelancers and they're creative people as well who are given a bigger leash just by nature of their jobs, you're in a you're in a tough spot. Now, I'm not playing my tiny little violin here for a billion dollar publisher. I mean, you know, when you're cranking out these kinds of books and these kinds of decisions, then, hey, that that comes with the job. I, I'm not too feeling too sorry for you when you're when you're super rich. And you're making these profits, and then you have to control your employees. It's um, it's actually politically, it's very much how I feel about uh, the the president or the Congress. It's it's like, well, you guys are, um, you know, you're paid at a super high level. You're going out and raising millions and millions of dollars. Um, I think it's a reasonable expectation that you can control yourself and not act like an a hole in public. Maybe more so than you know, regular person. I think you, you've got this, this public persona job, you pick that job and you're being paid for it. So, you know, hey, maybe president of the United States, you know, tweeting, maybe, maybe you shouldn't tweet like a crazy person. <laughs> maybe not, maybe, you know, I, and, and, and I'm not going down that argument because, you know, that half the country is really happy that he's communicating in that way and, and getting the message directly across and having it be filtered. And the other half is horrified. And that's a whole other, whole other debate. My point is that the rules aren't always equal for everybody. When you hold a certain position and you're making money and you're profiting off things, then suddenly you have a slightly different set of rules. That's, that's just life. So for the publisher, don't get me wrong. I think it is their job to figure out what you do with these larger than life personalities and how you control them and how you, you know, manage them. But it's, it's a tough, it's a tougher thing to do than people online give credit for. Because if you have a, you know, somebody who is selling you, you know, a million dollar seller, they're selling, they're making millions of dollars of profit for you as a creator. You've invested in that person. You put their name out there. You do interviews, you fly them to panels, you, you do all kinds of things to promote this individual. And then one weekend that individual goes on social media and, uh, you know, starts flaming somebody who that, who he disagrees with politically. Um, what you going to do? You can say, all right, no tolerance for that here. You're fired. Certainly can do that. But now you've just lost millions of dollars and, and make no mistake about it. Your competition down the street is absolutely going to hire the person, regardless of the online behavior. They are going to hire that person to start writing comic. Do you slap them on the wrist, say, hey, you do this again, we're going to fire you? Well, that may work. It might. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, the creator might look at that and go, yeah, I'm, I'm making millions of dollars for you. You're not going to do anything. So I'm just going to keep being me. So then what do you do? Um, at some point, these big publishers, the the corporations, do a you know risk to value assessment, and they say, all right, even though this guy's bringing in millions of dollars, the potential scandal or outrage or loss of sales or lawsuit or whatever it happens to be is going to outweigh the dollars that they bring in, and then suddenly it flips really fast. And the funny thing that is that people don't know, people never seem to reconcile in their minds when it flips. It's not a slow, gradual process. It's not like the corporation slowly falls out of love with somebody and then they they ease them off books and you know give them kind of a few farewell parties and and do it nicely. It's like, hey, this person's making money, so full steam ahead, we'll make money. 
hey, this person is potentially going to cost us more money than we'll make, and they're gone. <laughs> and it's 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 very if you look in comics, um, it tends to be very abrupt <laughs> when those moments get hit. Now, they don't get hit often because generally speaking, most of the controversies, most of the outrages, most of the problems tend to be pretty pretty isolated. And this is one of those things. I'm not saying good or bad. I'm not weighing into any of that. But what I am saying is that if you are on social media and there was a creator who bashed uh, Trump supporters, um, that is not moving the needle. That is that is a blip in the overall market that is seeing this person's behavior and these person's books. Now, I, I believe it's always best to try and treat everyone cordially and, and try and, you know, not it's not middle of the road. It's just treat everybody with respect. So you don't see me going online talking about um, screw you for liking this candidate or whatever else. You're not going to see me do that because pragmatically, I, my belief is always that's going to cost me business at some point. And if it doesn't cost me business, it's going to definitely create some anxiety and some arguments. And what, I don't have time for those arguments. So it just isn't worth it for me. There's not, there's no profit in it for me, if you will. So I'm always amazed when um, creators or celebrities or anybody wanders into that space. I don't know that they're doing themselves any good, but it's their decision to make. It's totally their decision to make and they can run their life the way they want. But from a corporation's perspective, um, it has to really get a lot of noise going before they're going to want to filter those people out. Otherwise, it's live and let live. It's it's don't get involved and just let let the dollars and the stuff flow. And that is why you see it keep keep going because you know to to you it looks like this this is a horrible thing, as opposed to you know maybe two percent of the audience seeing it. It's not to diminish it. It's not to say that the activity is okay. It's just saying it's it's not it's a business decision. That's all. If it grows to be bigger, then that flip will happen like I'm talking about. Then one day it'll wake up and say, whoa, okay, now 25% of the fans of our audience is being offended. That's a, re- that's a big number, and we're moving on. That, that, that may happen. I don't know. Anyway, I, so the question I, I kind of will pose out to you guys, what do you do? I think a lot of companies, um, not just in comics, but everywhere, face this. If you're in the tech community, you get a superstar, superstar uh, coder, software engineer, and um, they, that they they behave the way they want. I mean, it's it's not uncommon. You head up the street to old Amazon or Microsoft or or Oracle or any of these companies, and you will find some ridiculous, obnoxious a holes in high level positions there who are really smart. And the company puts up with it, and they will continue to put up with it as long as it it doesn't exceed the threshold. They would everybody would love an answer. I think you go company by company, and if you said, "Hey, I've got a solution for you. Here's how you deal with people who pull shenanigans from time to time, but are still producing revenue. Here's the solution. You do this. If you have that answer, you are going to be a billionaire because companies want you. They want they want to know. They want to know that secret. Trust me." These companies do not want to put up with the a-holes either. They, it's annoying to them. And for many, it feels like a ticking time bomb of just at what point is this, are we going to misjudge and this blows up and suddenly it costs a lot of money. That's that's definitely on people's minds. It's on people at uh, DC and Marvel's minds. It absolutely is. If you think it isn't, you're, you're crazy. You can, you can hunt down uh, these individuals. I shouldn't use the word hunt down, but you can find these individuals and you can in HR and other places, and and they're not having a good time. <laughs> they're they're dealing with a lot of mess. They know it, and um and when it does blow up and the outrage kind of rolls over them, then they have to deal with it, and nobody wants to do that either. So, hey, uh, thanks for listening. Um, hope uh, again would want your comments. What do you think about this issue? This is a tough one. Um, subscribe, notify, bring your friends. What what do they think? Would love to hear from you. And thanks for listening.